Hello. In this video, we are going to take another look at the Berthelot equation, this time to recast it in the form of the Vero equation. Exactly what we're going to do is to determine the Vero equation constants B and C to fit the Berthelot equation. We recall the Berthelot equation where the pressure is equal to RT divided by the volume V minus this parameter small b minus A divided by TV squared where A is a second parameter of the equation and A and B fill roles similar to the constants A and B in the van der Waals equation. We also note here that anytime we see V, this is to represent the molar volume, which is often written as V sub M. We have omitted the subscript to make for less confusion in writing out the equations, but recall, no matter where we see V, we mean the molar volume V sub M. So we have our expression to the left for the Bertolo equation, and we set it equal to a virial expansion, where we have RT over V times this power series in 1 over V. And in principle, at least, this can be an infinite series. That's why we show the plus and the dot, dot, dot for the ellipsis. But in today's derivation, we are going to truncate the expansion at the C term. Also notice that our little b parameter over here, we've written in red, and our large b, our big b parameter over here, we've written in blue to help make sure that we distinguish these because these are two different values. Next, we've simply written out explicitly the right-hand side while truncating it at the uh, divided by v cubed section. For our next line, we've simply taken the expedient of dividing through each term by RT, which results in an expression that is simpler to write. Next, we multiply each side of the equation by V cubed, the volume to the third power, and we get V cubed divided by V minus B minus AV divided by RT squared equals V squared plus BV plus C. In the next step, we are going to multiply through each side of the equation by the quantity V minus B, thereby uh, limiting the amount of fractions that we have to deal with. Performing that operation, we then get the very complicated equation that we see on the bottom line. At least temporarily, it seems that we've made our work more complex but we're going to see when we start multiplying out the terms, this will lead to a simplification in the near future. Simplifying the left-hand side, we use the distributive law, and we get v cubed minus ab squared over rt squared plus ab times v divided by rt squared. And when we multiply out the terms on the right-hand side, we are going to take the expediency of lining up the terms in the correct powers of V to make simplification easier. Applying the distributive law here gives us V cubed minus BV squared. Multiplying out these terms gives us big B V squared minus little big B big B V. And we see here precisely why we've written the little b and the big b in different colors to avoid confusion. Then for our final term, we end up getting cv minus little b times c. And notice that we've lined up the relevant powers of v to make simplification simpler in the next step. Now if we collect on the right hand side, the appropriate powers of V and collect the coefficients, we get V cubed plus big B minus little b times V squared plus 
C minus little b, b, big B, times V, minus BC. And we know that this is equal to our uh, expression on the left-hand side. Now we're going to exploit a property of polynomials that two polynomials are going to be equal at all points if and only if their coefficients of corresponding powers of the variable v are the same. So one of the things that's helpful right away is we notice that we have v cubed and v cubed on each side, so we can delete them immediately. So we cancel those. The next step is to notice the relevant powers of v squared. So on the left hand side, the, the coefficient of v squared is minus a over rt squared. And on the right hand side, the coefficient is big B minus little b. These must be equal to each other. This means specifically that minus a over rt squared is equal to big B minus little b. Our objective here is to solve for the uh, second virial coefficient, capital B, which is easy enough to do simply by adding a small b to each side. This shows us that the virial equation uh, constant b to correspond to the Bertillot equation, this capital B has to be little b minus a over rt squared. So that's the first of the two constants that we have to solve for. Next, we set equal the coefficients of the linear term in V, V to the first power. So that's going to give us, so we compare this term and this term, so we know the coefficients have to be equal. So that gives us that A times little b divided by RT squared is equal to C minus little b times big B. And again, we can solve relatively quickly by adding little b times big B to each side. We simply add little b times big B to each side, and we have an expression for c, which is equal to little b times big B plus a times little b divided by rt squared. And we can go even further because we have an expression for capital B. So in our final step, we're going to substitute this expression for capital B into our expression for capital C to solve. Then we substitute our expression for capital B into our expression for capital C, and we notice that if we multiply through here, we get b squared minus ab over rt squared. Well, that minus ab over rt squared exactly cancels the positive ab over rt squared. So we're left with that the value of c is simply b squared. As a result, we were able to determine the two virial coefficients, the two virial constants, such that the virial expansion would be equal to the Bertillot equation. I thank you very much for your attention. As always, have a good one.